Hello people and welcome to the second part of my series on the Unix philosophy. In this part we're going to take a look at technical debt, technical capital, and how to build technical capital. So let's first look at technical debt. Technical debt is writing an easy solution instead of a well-designed one. And usually this happens because management is telling you to move fast and break things. And what this means is that you end up reaching for the easiest solution possible and you just throw that in to the pile of software. And what that means is that every time the customer asks for a change or you need to write a new feature, it actually is harder to do. It takes more lines of code, it takes much more effort to build something on to a piece of software. And our software ends up looking something like this. Now before the advent of architecture, a lot of our large structures looked like this, a big mound. And if that's why if you look around the world, a lot of the old large structures look like this. You see pyramids, ziggurats, things of that sort. Now if you think about the word architecture, the root word is arch. And the invention of the arch is what sparked the invention of architecture. And that led to buildings that looked like this, where you could efficiently use material and build buildings that actually allowed light to come in. And that is unfortunately not where software is today. A lot of the time we don't think about how our software is going to work in a larger ecosystem. We just worry about the module that we're building, we unit test it, and maybe we do uh, integration testing as well. And you could think of that as, as a, an ecosystem, but really it's just part of the single monolithic program that you're building. So most of our software looks like this today, but we'd like to build something like this. And that brings us to technical capital. So let's take a look at what technical capital is. Technical capital is where a solution pays for itself over time. So instead of it costing more and more work to build something, it costs less work to build something because you've built reusable building blocks in the past. And since you've built them in the past and you've used them in the past, they're probably reliable, they have less bugs, and they're probably more efficient. If you're using something over and over again at scale, then you probably had run into issues of scale and had to make the program efficient. And so that's technical capital. It also is really easy to make changes to your software. When things are well designed, you can simply take out a piece and put a new piece in. So for example, the, one of the programs that we wrote last time uh, made all the characters uppercase. If we wanted to change that to perhaps do lowercase, it would be very trivial to change that program. You simply open up the program and change it from two upper to two lower. There's no need to refactor or unwind or decouple anything. Uh, it's just a simple, trivial change because the program does one thing. Also, once you have all these previous program building blocks, building larger and more powerful software becomes fun. So let's take a, a look at a somewhat practical example of this. So let's go back to the programs that we wrote before, split stream and upper. And let's say that we're working on a team that's building a text editor and we're working on the spell checker. Uh, well, one of the things that you want to do is you want to compare all the words of your text to a dictionary. So what we can do is we can use some of the programs that we've written before to help us out in writing our program. We can use split string and upper. Because our dictionary, uh, well, let's just take a look. So let's, uh, let's take text, oh, let's, let's cat out our text and text two. And the first thing that we're going to do to it is we're going to split. Uh, we're going to split the string, and that will give us words. The next thing that we can do is 
uh, make the words all the same case. So we have an uppercase program, so let's make everything uppercase. So that's very nice. We're well on our way to being able to compare these words to a dictionary. Uh, now, another thing that we might want to do is a dictionary is usually sorted, and it's much more efficient to compare words that are in order. So let's, let's go ahead and use a previously written program in Linux called sort to sort all of our words. So now we see that we start with A and we, and we go on downwards. Uh, this also makes us aware of a few other things, that we have repeated words like is and line and lowercase. Uh, it doesn't make sense to to check the same word over and over again. In fact, in normal text, the word the and of and all and those sorts of words are used a lot. It only makes sense to check them once. So let's go ahead and uh, use another program that has been built before called Unique. And now we have uh, unique words. We no longer have multiple uh, is words or line or lowercase. Now we're only doing, uh, now when we check against our dictionary, it takes a lot less work to do our checking. And uh, let's, let's actually just stop here and take a look. Actually, let's do a reset. And let's take a look at this program that we've written. We've just, in a few seconds, we've written a program that does the majority of work for a spell checker. Imagine if we had wanted to write this in, by scratch, right? Uh, the, the, the program that we've written so far would probably be maybe hundreds of lines of code, and it would be buggy, and it would be inefficient. Uh, by contrast, these programs that have been built before and have been used by many hundreds or thousands of people, uh, you know that they're not going to be—they're not going to have as many bugs. They're going to be efficient because they've been used over and over at scale. Um, and this is technical capital. We've—we've we've built uh, a good portion of a spell checker in only a few seconds, instead of ha it taking us hours or days. And that—that uh, that is a, a good illustration of how to build technical capital. So in review. Uh, in order to build technical capital, you follow the Unix philosophy. You write programs that do one thing well, that compose, and easily communicate with each other. And uh, that's it for part two of, our, of my series on the Unix philosophy. Thank you for watching. Till next time.